On about 40% of land on Earth, rainfall is highly unpredictable. Where and when crops and pasture will be able to grow can change from one year to the next. Food production systems that depend on predictability struggle to control these natural environments, even with costly investments. This option was never truly sustainable, and with global climate change is meeting its limits. But depending on predictability is a choice. It does not need to be that way. Highly variable natural environments actually offer opportunities for food production when producers specialize in being in the right place at the right time. Pastoralists are such producers. They specialize in making sustainable use of highly variable environments to produce food. By managing their animals' grazing itineraries to match the changing opportunities in their landscape, they can keep their herds in a relatively stable condition. They track beneficial combinations of forage plants and highest concentrations of nutrients. This keeps their animals on the best possible diet that only a variable landscape can offer. When they have the freedom to move to the right place at the right time, pastoralists make sustainable use of the natural environment and produce organically for domestic markets and export. Conventional food production systems that choose to depend on predictability need to combat variability to control the natural environment. With climate change, the natural environment is becoming even more variable everywhere. This is now our common future. If we learn from pastoralists, environmental variability can become an asset. They are walking the path to sustainable food production systems in the face of climate change. By sustainably turning environmental variability into food, pastoralists are already in the future. Pastoralists are already in the future. So this Agora discussion is organized by Veterinaire Sans Frontières International, VSF International, International Livestock Research Institute, Comitato Collaborazione Medica, and the Coalition of European Lobbies for Eastern African Pastoralism. So we've seen the video, and now it really is my pleasure to talk to Zuleika Madère. Zuleika, Welcome. I'm here in Brussels and you're joining us from Africa. Uh, so, Zuleika, you are from Ethiopia and originally from a pastoralist community. And you are a graduated uh, veterinarian with experience in managing and monitoring public health and veterinary programs in pastoralist systems. So we don't have much time, so I'm going to uh, stop the formalities and actually start talking to you following that video that we saw. Can you tell us, Zuleika, why pastoralism is important and what are the main challenges that you face these days? Thank you very much, Shahada, for inviting me um, to this session. Um, pastoralists have a long-term flexibility that is based on their ability to exploit uh, patchy resources. The more the nomadic pastoralists are, the better they are able to survive in a climatic catastrophe such as blizzards and droughts. In the context of climate change, it is clear that pastoralism has evolved to manage and even benefit the climate variability through mobility and risk uh, spreading strategies. Pastoralists' attitude towards natural resource management are often deeply embedded in their culture. And there are many ruling rules governing which resources can be used by whom and when and how and whether it is a rangeland as well as a water or any other biodiversity, it is clear that pastoralists value their natural resources and natural environment deeply and their desire to protect and sustainable management. Among the basic challenges such as lack of access to water, pasture and basic services, the problem the pastoralists face is much more of a social and political as it is an economical and resource-based challenge. So across many Eastern African countries, pastoralist communities are annexed for uses um, which are perceived as a more productive commercial, agricultural, and ranching. And this seriously undermines the capacity of the pastoralists. Um, 
systems to function properly in which it turns out later on to undermine the pastoralist's capacity to respond to environmental variability. Also, in addition to that, there is economic and uh, social marginalization among these communities by resulting to a high level of food insecurity, conflict, and poverty, which are common among the pastoralist communities. So, Zeleka, thank you very much. So, a number of challenges, and I have to say how brave and resilient you are to be working there and facing these challenges with such strength and courage. So, really inspiring. Now, the second question I have for you is about the One Health approach, which recognizes the interlinkages between human, animal, and environmental health. And this this approach is at the center of the HEAL, the HEAL project, that you are implementing in Ethiopia, Somalia, and Kenya. So can you explain to us, uh, Zaleka, how One Health is key in pastoral areas and how this approach is actually put in place in pastoralist communities? Zaleka, we've lost Zaleka for a minute or two. So let's, let's just talk a little bit about what we saw. Uh, really, we've been looking at One Health. And One Health is a collaborative, collaborative approach to achieving optimal health and well-being outcomes, recognizing the interconnections between people, animals, plants, and air, and their shared environment. And as I said, we saw, uh, so we have Zuleika back. So Zuleika, I was asking you a little bit more about the HEAL, the HEAL project and how it's being implemented. The screen is yours. Thank you very much. Yeah, having a network connection problem. So, and One Health is an approach that is designing and implementing programs and policies, legislation and research in which multiple sectors communicate and collaborate to achieve a better public health outcome. The Hill project is a regional project working in three countries, in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia. And the concept of the Hill is underpinned by the very fact that opportunities for better engaging with governments on the provision of appropriate basic service for the pastoral communities exist. And the process of building capacity and enabling environment for appropriate service provision is long and complex in any community. So the One Health is integrated service delivery at the community level and is especially adequate in places where interdependency between humans, animals, and the environment are high, in which, in this case, the pastoral system lifestyle is the cycle of land fueling the livestock and the livestock fueling the pastoralists. So the HEAL project is underpinned on that basis and it is aiming to deliver better access of health service delivery on and from a multi-sectoral perspective, where uh, pastoral communities are engaged in defining a sustainable uh, demand-driven based One Health units, which are context-specific, cost-effective, ser better service delivery modalities. And the One Health units in this case are recognized as a solution for a service delivery for pastoralized communities in the Horn of Africa, in the three countries, and by policymakers and investors, and to pull their attention towards that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zuleika. We're coming to the end of our very short interview, but I just wanted to ask you one very quick question and then respond in 30 seconds. Your one hope going forward, one hope that you have at the moment. Yes, my one hope is to pull together all the resources we have and to achieve a sustainable, context-specific and uh, demand-driven response towards achieving a sustainable and better food security and livelihood for the pastoralist communities. Thank you very much, Zaleka, for joining us from Eastern Africa. You've really, really given us such inspiring information about One Health approach for pastoralism. And also we saw, of course, a wonderful uh, video, a very short video. So that brings us to the end for the moment of this uh, morning session where we've talked about the role of indigenous women. We've had a wonderful discussion just now with Zaleka on One Health approach to pastoralism. And now we're going to go for a 10 minute break and that gives you all an opportunity to visit the stands, have some conversation, talk to people and keep engaging, keep engaging with European Development Days 2021. I'll be back in about a few minutes, 10 minutes or so, and then I'll be...
having a number of interviews and sessions with as inspiring people as we've just met. Thank you very much indeed and see you back in 10 minutes. Thank you.